in here. You see the shifting in here. You see the breaking in here. You see the renewing in here. You see the restoring in here. Do it now, God. Do it now, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 I thank God for being here tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I thank God for traveling mercy, traveling grace. Hallelujah. Bringing us safely here. I thank God for the woman of God. Come on, honor the woman of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God for putting on such a beautiful event. Hallelujah. And your team and everybody that's a part of it, all of the vendors. Hallelujah. Bless you all. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I give honor to God for he is my life. I give honor to God for he is my life. Hallelujah. I give honor to my husband in his absence. Hallelujah. For having a man of God that loves God and knows that when his wife has been called to do an assignment, he says, baby, go. I pray you there. Do what the Lord has said do. So I thank God and I give honor to my husband, Pastor Sean, in his absence. My head, my baby, my lover, my boyfriend, my baby daddy. Hallelujah. My all in all. Hallelujah. I give honor. Thank God for my mother being here tonight. I tell you, if, if she can get there, she's going. Hallelujah. If she can get there, she is going. So I definitely give honor to my mother tonight for being here tonight. I thank God for my adjutants, my assistants for being here tonight. Hallelujah. I tell people all the time, I got me a Peter, James, and John. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I got me a David. Come on. I got one that'll chop ears off. I got one that'll shoot stones with slings you better know it i got one that'll see the demon in you and cast you out okay hallelujah glory to god i thank god for the warriors that he has given me because everybody needs some warriors everybody needs some warriors hallelujah some people that'll pray you through ain't trying to worry about what you got going on but you give them a call and say i need you to pray for me okay i'm praying now, baby, what's wrong? What's going No, I need you to pray for me. I'm praying. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I thank God, hallelujah, for them being here with me tonight and not taking it robbery or thinking it robbery to be with me tonight because we have two that have, well, we got three that got little babies, but we have two that has little, little babies. Hallelujah. This one's baby is five months and this one's baby three months. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Left them husbands at home. Well, you got your baby somewhere. Left the hubby at home with the baby, but he think he the mama and the daddy. Hallelujah. He think he's the mom and the daddy. Hallelujah. So I want to tell you guys, I love you so much. Hallelujah. Love y'all for being here tonight. Hallelujah. Come on and give God some praise. Listen, I don't get tired of giving God praise. I won't ever get tired of giving God praise. Because he's done too much for me. He's done so much for me that I have to give him praise. I have to give him praise. I have to give him glory. I would not be if he wasn't who he was. I would not be if I didn't give him what to do. I could not be. I could not be if it wasn't for God. So no matter what, how, what, how, how, water, whatever it is, I give him glory. Because I believe that my praise can bring me out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all stop. I ain't ready to preach yet. Jesus. He come up on in here and he about to take me on in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But I am so grateful tonight. Everybody look at somebody and point to them and say, I love you. I love you. Hallelujah. Tell somebody else, I love you. I love you. Hallelujah. You know, that's one of the things that we don't do as often. It's truly love. You know, love can do so much if we just love like God loves. Love can do so much if we just love like God loves. Hallelujah. And that's one of the things the Lord has been saying to me so, 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 so dearly. He's been saying, just love. 
just love you can take your seats just love just love just love hallelujah so i i truly believe that everywhere that i go even at our house and at new beginnings i we, we we do this thing where we tell everybody to love on somebody tell somebody you love them so everywhere i go now the lord has been speaking to me and tell me to tell the people to tell somebody that they love them because you never know who's lacking love and just your i love you can do something to them amen because love casts out all fear love covers a multitude of sin love can make wrong right hallelujah when you're loving like god amen amen glory to god i'm not going to detain you and i'm not gonna hold you hallelujah but i'm gonna do what thus saith the lord and i'm gonna get out of the way hallelujah glory to god if you have your bibles if you would go with me to esther we're gonna go to esther tonight we're gonna hit this home girl up amen glory to god esther chapter four Hallelujah. God is so good. Hallelujah. That is good. I tell you, it seems as if the woman of God was talking about how you may have went through some things to get here and different things take place. I love how she said we ain't even going to discuss it or talk about it. There's no need because so many times we as women, we like to give Satan all the credit. We do. We like to give him all the credit. We like to talk about all the things that he do. Uh -huh. Stop talking about what he do and talk about what God is doing. Yeah, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Talk about what God is doing. And not only you talk about what God is doing, but talk about what you want God to do. Amen. Amen. You got to start using the power that God has given you. That's one of the things that we can be in God is to be what God says we can be when we begin to speak what God says we already are. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Esther chapter 4. And we're going to begin reading at verse 14. And the word of the Lord reads, if you have it, say amen. 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 Hallelujah. I don't know what the custom is for you all, but if you would please stand for the reading of the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Esther 4, verse 14. And it says, if you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place. But you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just such a time as this. <laughs> then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go and gather together all the Jews of Susa. And fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I would do the same. And then, though it is against the law, I will go in to see the king. If I must die, I must die. If I may use for a topic, it would be I'm breaking the rules tonight. I'm breaking the rules tonight. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, God, for this special occasion tonight. Father, we thank you, God, for what you have already done thus far. Father, we thank you, God, for what's getting ready to take place. Father, we thank you, God, for every woman that is in this house tonight. Father, we thank you, God, for your spirit being in the house tonight. Father, as I, your servant, your vessel, come before you tonight. Father, I am speaking, oh God, in this atmosphere. God, that you will deliver. You will set free. You will bring restoration. You will redeem. You will bring to life, God. You will awaken tonight in this atmosphere. Father, I am praying, oh God, that as I deliver this word tonight, God, I die to self. I move myself out of the way, oh God, so that you can rise up, so that you can speak. Allow the words to flow out of my belly like rivers of living water. God, 
God, let the prophet in me arise tonight, oh God. God, to be able to give a prophetic word for your people, a prophetic word, oh God, that it will help them with whatever they are going through right now. God, I speak, oh God, that no weapon formed against his word will be able to prosper tonight. I speak against every distraction. I speak against every disruption. I speak against everything that Satan tries to do. It is canceled in the mighty name of Jesus. It is canceled in the mighty name of Jesus. The assignment that Satan has put forth, it is canceled in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. What you want to do? Have free reign tonight, God. We make this atmosphere conducive for you to move like never before. I seal this in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, you may take your seats. Listen, I'm breaking all the rules tonight. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, when I got the invite, hallelujah, and, and I usually ask my assistants, I said, what is the theme? And when I got the theme, a, the rise. Of a confident woman. I said, that's bad. That's real bad. The rise of a confident woman. And I begin to pray and I begin to, to, to seek God for this special occasion. And I ask God to give me a word for this house, for this place where you are now. And the Lord told me to go to Esther. And with what he wants to speak tonight, tonight I believe that we have to learn how to break some rules. Yes. We've got to learn how to make what Satan wants us to do not happen. I know. Right. Amen. We've got to break some rules. We've got to break the law. First and foremost, we don't even have to worry about the law because right. grace took care of that. Amen. So with that being said, Jesus came to break the rules so we can also break some rules. Amen. So here we are in Esther chapter 4 verse 14. And I'm going to work this thing like the Lord gave it to me. Can I do that tonight? Yes. Hallelujah. It says here verse 14. If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place. But you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just a time such as this. When we think about Esther, we think about a woman when we do our research and go back and forth. Esther was a woman who was an orphan. And this woman lost her parents and her, she was being raised by her cousin at the time named Mordecai. And it talked about how the king at the time was throwing this big party. And he had this big, big party that he was throwing. And his, his wife at the time, the queen at the time, Vashanti, was in a place where he was calling her to come because he wanted to show her off. He wanted to show how beautiful she was. And, and it stated that she had an attitude. She was nasty. And she was like, listen, I ain't got time for you. I got my own girls. We over here chilling. So it says he gets upset because now he's embarrassed being that he's the king. He's embarrassed now. And now his people, his soldiers are like, oh, you got to get rid of her. You, you the king. You mean to tell me she going to tell you what to do and you're the king? So it stated that they were like, you got to get rid of her. You got to kick her to the curb, throw her out. So it stated that when he got rid of her, he put on this beauty pageant to find the most beautiful woman in the town, in the city that he could now take as his bride. And it stated that as all of these women were being groomed, it talked about how Mordecai went and helped groom Esther. And it talked about how when these women now in this beauty pageant standing up in a row, standing before the king, the king picks Esther. She's gorgeous. She's beautiful. I want her. So then it talks about how life goes on, we passing on, and how Mordecai got his issues and his problems, and how Mordecai now helps 
save the king from the plot and the schemes that his soldiers had going on and now we're moving on a little further and it talks about how now the king's a homeboy Haman now wants to kill Mordecai because Mordecai messing up Mordecai won't reverence him Mordecai won't bow down to him so he's upset now now he's sitting and plotting up stuff so that now Mordecai can get killed and now Mordecai at the front gate of the palace. See, I'm just skipping through. Y'all need to read if y'all don't know what I'm talking about. So it says now Mordecai is in mourning because now Haman now done went to the king, told the king, we're going to put this little decree in the book and write it down because how many of you know that when something is declared and decree, it cannot be reversed. It cannot be taken out. I just taught y'all something. Learn how to stop decreeing and declaring something and Satan can't take it back. See, the confident woman knows that when I declare and decree a thing, Satan can't take that back. So here it is and I'm writing in the book now. We got all of your family now. Um, Esther and Mordecai, all y'all family is getting ready to be destroyed. There's a certain date in April that they are now going to destroy your whole entire family, your whole entire uh, background, your whole entire tribe now. So it talks about now at this time, Mordecai is in burlap, his old clothes, he done throw them away and he done put on mourning clothes. And he's now at the gate. And he's at the gate morning, and it, it stated that some of Esther's maids noticed that Mordecai was at the gate. And she says, well, go to him and ask him what is the problem, what is the issue. And then Mordecai, they go to Mordecai, Mordecai sends the message back and let them know that, uh, they, that hey, Haman then put in a, 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 a decree, and he stated that, your whole family, my whole family, our whole tribe, our whole background, everybody is going to be killed and destroyed. And we need your help. Now, it says here that she begins to say, now, hold up. You need my help. I, you, I, you, I can't help you. I don't. I, I don't know how how is it that I'm going to be able to help you. I can't help you. I can't I can't go to the king. You 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 ain't heard what happened to Bashanti. You gonna want me now to go to the king? It was said in the book that you couldn't go before the king unless he called for you. Somebody should have caught that in the spirit. You couldn't go before the king unless he called for you. But the fact that we have entered into a new place and he said now you can come boldly before the throne. I can break some rules now. I ain't got to go through nobody. I ain't got to wait for him to call me. I can just go and say, Jesus, I need you. See, that's how the confident woman does. She knows I ain't, I ain't, I ain't got to go. I ain't got to wait on nothing no more. I don't need an advocate. Jesus is my advocate. And he is the way to the Father. All I got to do is call him. So she said, hold up, hold up now, hold up, hold up. Now you know that I can't, I can't go before the king. I can't, I can't do that. I can't go up there. He got the call from me first. And then Mordecai said, hold up. You think that you was made queen for nothing? You think you went through what you went through for nothing? You think you lost your mama and your daddy for nothing? You think you had to lose stuff for nothing? You think you suffered and had trials and tribulations for nothing? It's all a part of the rise of a confident woman. You think you went through for nothing? You think you now a confident woman for nothing? Hold on. If you stay quiet now, there's a possibility that they will get their freedom from somewhere else. But your people going to die. I need some confident women to say, uh-uh, I'm breaking rules tonight. I got some people to say. Say, oh no, I got a daughter, I got a son, I got a husband, 
quiet now. Yeah. If you keep quiet now, yeah. there's a possibility that freedom and deliverance will arise from somewhere else. Let's think about the word arise real quick. Because the theme is the rise of a confident woman. So when I begin to study this lesson and the Lord began to speak to me and I looked up the word arise, there were several definitions in the word arise. But one of the definitions was when you are getting up from a kneeling position. Y'all didn't catch it. When you are getting up from a kneeling position. Okay, so rise is to get up from a kneeling position. And if I am on the rise of being a confident woman, I looked up the word confident. All right. And confident means to be sure, to be secure, to know that where I am, I will stay. I'm secure in this place. I'm secure in this position. I'm secure in who I am. I'm secure in what the Lord says about me. I'm secure in who I'm called to be. I'm secure, I'm sure. So if I am on the rise of being a confident woman, it means that I am getting up from a kneeling position to be sure that what I pray for is coming to pay. So, you mean to tell me that if I keep quiet at this time, what I am supposed to be, if I don't be, then the people who are assigned to me, the people who are called to what's in me, won't get their deliverance from what's in me. God will then use somebody else who was confident enough to break some rules and help them be delivered. But then I might die out. You can't keep quiet now. You can't shut up now. You wouldn't shut up no time before. You wouldn't keep your mouth closed no other time. Every time some news come around, you was ready to tell that. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Every time somebody had something going on in their life and you wanted to hear about it, you was going to run and tell them, don't shut up now. You can't keep quiet now. If you're going to run some news, run that. Can't keep quiet now. No. You know everybody business, Lord, why we going here? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. You know everybody, everybody business. You know what everybody got going on. You know what going on in Sally House, Sue House, Saint House, everybody house. But now you want to be quiet when it's time to save somebody else. But you good for tearing others down. See, the reason that you can only be a confident woman and be on the rise of a confident woman, woman is to be in a position that you are kneeling and you are submitting and you are removing everything that's not like God. You can't be confident without God. You can't be confident without God. No. Because see, the creator is the one who created you. And in order for you to be what he has called you to be, you've got to have him. And in order for you to be confident in who he's called you to be, you've got to be confident in your God. A lot of people can't be on the rise of a confident woman because you don't even have confidence in your God. Praise God. 
Preach it. Preach it. This was one of the problems that Esther had because of the fact that she was an orphan child. She really didn't have an identity. I lost my identity when I lost my parents. Now I'm operating off of what my cousin taught me. So now I've got to get to the place where I know who now I am. I've got to come in being who I am now. No longer can I walk in the shoes of Mordecai. I've got to walk in the shoes of Esther. Because everything I know, Mordecai taught it to me. So now I've got to get to a place where i got to do this on my own. I'm breaking rules tonight. You can't keep quiet now. Hallelujah. Not now. You can't shh, shh now. Jesus. Don't you know that we need you? Don't you know we need you? So Esther says, Well, she tells her maids, I need you to go and tell Mordecai then that um, I'm going to go before the king. But what I need you to do is I need you to go and tell the people that I need all of you to go on a fast for three days. That is the problem. So many of us can't keep the plate out of hand. That is the problem. So many of us be about to die when the Lord said just drink water. That is the problem. So many of us are weighted with things that the Lord wants you to get rid of through fact. The Bible says some things come through fasting and praying. And this is the issue. You're not confident because you ain't reaching out to the confidence. The one that gives you the confidence. Your connection to God is what builds you up. Your connection to God is what makes you strong. I'm about to die. I'm so hungry. Oh, God, you got a peppermint. I got to drink water. Can I put a Kool Aid pack in it? medication. I got to eat before I take my pill. But if you was confident enough, you will understand that through the fasting and praying, the Lord will take the pills, he'll take diabetes, and he'll heal your behind. You're more confident in your doctor and your medicine than you are Jesus, who is the doctor.
need you holy. Day and night. She says, and guess what? Not only will y'all do it, but me and my maids will as well. See, it's something about when you have two or three that's gathered Lord. together in his name. When you have everybody on one accord. This is the problem with so many women. We can't be on one accord. That's right. That's right. You got a business. I got a business. My business got to be better than yours. Let me go check out and see what you got going on so I can make sure mine is better. I need, I need to see, I need to see what you doing. We, we, we too competitive. We, we, we too busy looking at what the other one has. And we looking at what they got going on and what they driving and what they marriage like and how they dress and where they going and what they cut all of that foolishness out. Your purpose is to help another woman be confident. Your purpose is to help another woman arise. Your purpose is to help another woman get on her knees and come up somebody. That's your purpose. But the purpose that we have stepped into is to tear the other one down. Y'all fast and pray for three days And me and my maids are going to do the same thing I'm not just going to tell you to do something that I ain't going to do Amen Amen. We like to do that I'm going to tell you what you need to do But you need to do the same thing Don't you know the Lord gave you that word for you It's good to pass it on But he really gave it to you we be ready to share stuff on Facebook. Oh, the Lord gave me that to give us something. No, it's for you, baby. It's for you. Eat it first. Swallow it. Get some water. Make sure it went down. Digest it, please. It's for you. It's for you first. Then once you do it, then give it. Stop being a hypocrite. Lord be looking. He probably looking out like. You know I gave you that word. You trying to act like you right. You ain't right. You know that word was for you. Try act like you got it going. You ain't got it all together, baby. Come on now. You know that word for you. <laughs> Trying to tell you, Facebook will make us think we got it all together. Come on. We hide behind Facebook, boy. We can be as many faces as we want to behind Facebook. We're a millionaire in our own land. We tell everybody what we got. I'm on vacation. You just standing in front of your picture on your wall with all the trees and the water. Child, I'm in Bermuda. You better turn your you you better turn your uh, your GPS location off because it will tag where you at. Boy, you in Bermuda? Wait a minute, that say you in Columbia, South Carolina. Girl, you know you live. Come, stop that. I'll be, I'll be the petty one in the inbox you and say, hold up, you forgot to take your Wi-Fi thing off. <laughs> you better take that off. Everybody gonna know you ain't there for real. I got you. I got your bag. I'm your hunger. I'm looking out for you. I'm trying to make you company, girl. I'm just one of them ones. I'm one of them ones. I will inbox you. Yes, I will. Yes. You can go to Bermuda for real. Right. You can 
go for real? There's a lot of little vacation stuff they got at them packages now. Good prices. You ain't got to fake it. You can go for real. Say it loud. Say it loud. Be confident. Get in the water. Keep the water up in the beach. Make it Get your hair wet. Get this picture. Hurry up. My back hurt now. But I need y'all to fast. Help us, Lord. And I'm going to fast with you guys. And it said that she said these words. She says, and I'm going to break the rules. I know it's not befitting for me to stand before the king without him calling me. But if I got to die for this, I'm going to die. Whatever happens. I'm going to break rules tonight because I understand that when I am on the rise, I understand that when I am on the rise, I understand that when I am on the rise, because the only way that I can rise up into a thing, I've got to be in a position lower than where I'm going. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I've got to be in a position lower than where I'm going. And in order for me to rise up into being a confident, a sure, a secure, a powerful, a strong woman, I've got to be in a position that when I get up, it takes me there. So, if I die, I'll die. But see, one of the things that I realized and I understood about this passage was that the woman of God, because that's what I'm going to call her, the woman of God knew the principles behind getting God to move. She understood the principles. She understood who she was at this time. I am created to help people be delivered. I am now at this time because he said, don't you think that you, you you don't think that you were just chosen to be chosen. No, baby, you was chosen for a time such as this. So she began to notice that at this time, there are people that I have to deliver. There are women that I have to bring out. I've got to be confident, and in order for me to be confident, I've got to break the rules. I've got to break the rules. I've got to break the rules. I know what they told me, yeah? They, they like to prophesy and say you this, but you've got to understand who you are and not what they say you are. They like to put the titles and stuff on your name because they want you to do what they want you to do. And they don't understand what God told you to do. So you've got to get to the place where you say, God, I know what they said, but I know what you said. I've got to break the rules. Yes, God gave you a vision. And the vision that he gave you, it seems as if it's not moving as quick as you want it to move. It seems as if everything that God showed you is just not showing up right now. It seems like everything that could happen for it to come to pass at this time, this time, this time could have happened. But you've got to understand that Satan will make you think give up. You might as well throw in a towel. You might as well say no. You might as well call it off. But I'm here to let you know a confident woman don't give up. A confident woman don't throw in a towel. A confident woman don't say I'm tired. A confident woman don't say I ain't gonna do 
a competent woman says, guess what? Hell or high water. I'm going to walk this one on out because I know what God told me. And I'm going to break every rule. I'm going to break it tonight. I'm going to go in like I ain't got no sense. I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. Because I've been in a position and this position that I've been in, let me know that when I get up, the confidence, the surety, the power, the anointing, the spirit of God that's in me is going to take me to where I'm supposed to go. If I die doing it, I'll die. Because I know that I'm dying for the glory of God. So here it is. They go on this fast. Sit down, y'all making me nervous. They go on this fast. And it says after the fast, it says Esther gets herself together. And Esther goes to stand before the king. She walks in the room where he is and it says then that he looks up at her. I can just imagine her saying, oh my God. Oh my God. Listen here. I'm going. If I die, I die. Whatever, whatever. This is it. But the thing about your king. The thing about your king is that he recognizes and he sees the glory. Remember, she was beautiful. Remember, she was beautiful. She was good looking to the eye. There was something on her that made her stand out to, to, for him to choose her. There was something about her, but you got to understand her roots. She came from the people of God. She comes from the people of God. Her people are the chosen people. It's just like God to kick out the people that ain't supposed to get your blessing and put you in the place to get your blessing. But Shanti was just holding her seat till she got old enough to get there. The woman of God spoke to the business owner. Don't you know the wealth is, is stored up for the wicked, but it's for you? That wealth is for you. They working it up. They making all this money. And they gonna be looking for you. And they gonna be like, child, how you spell your name? This check is for you. Because they understand where you came from. You came from God. Esther walks in here and he looks at her and I can just see in the spirit realm that he's looking at how beautiful she is because you got to understand when you come from a place of kneeling when you come from a place of fasting and praying when you come from a place from being in the presence of God when you come from a place from being in the glory when you come out you look like glory you come out looking like the oil you come out looking like the anointing you come out looking like power you come out looking like confidence you come out beautiful so he says baby my queen what's wrong now you're supposed to call me before I come but when I come 
<laughs> you cater to me. Some of y'all king is waiting on you to come. Some of your king has been waiting for a long time for you to come. But see, the problem is you've been waiting on him to call you. You've been waiting on him to come see about you. And he's been saying, but I've been waiting on you to come see about me. I've been waiting on you to call my name. I've been waiting on you to walk in my room. I've been waiting on you to say, Daddy, I've been waiting on you to come to me, but you ain't came. And here it is. She walks in the room and he says, baby, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? Don't you know that everything that I own, all of it belongs to you? Don't you know that the kingdom, half of it is yours? Don't you know the money? Don't you know? Y'all better have caught that. Don't you know the money that I have? Don't you know the healing that I have? Don't you know the wealth that I have? Don't you know the deliverance that I have? Don't you know everything I have is yours? What's wrong?
See, when you think about Job, and God gave me this revelation, when you think about Job, you got to understand that, see, God is the one that told Satan to touch him. That's it. That's it. So you got to understand that Satan had a plot, but God already had a plan. Because he knows your end before your beginning. And he knows the plan that he has for you, not to harm you, but to prosper you, to take you to the expected end, future and hope. Yes. So if God is going to tell Satan, first and foremost, boy, what you doing up here? What you doing? What you roaming around looking for? Have you tried my servant Job? Sound like a plan to me. See, Satan, you think you setting up, but God has already set up. And so what's going to happen is God's setup tied to your setup causes him to stand up. The rise. So no, baby, I'm fine. I just want to have a dinner. And this dinner, I want you and I want y'all to come. I want y'all to come. So it says she plans this dinner. And as she plans this dinner, and everything gets there and everything is prepared, they come to the dinner. And they're sitting down and they're eating. And the king said, okay, babe, we're eating. What, what, what's wrong? What is, is there anything that you need? Is there anything? Mm-mm. No, no, I'm fine. You like your food? <laughs> Is it good? Listen here, ma'am. <laughs> well, 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 baby, what do you want? I, you, you know what I want? I want you and your homeboy. I want y'all to come back to dinner with me tomorrow. Uh -huh. That's right. Come on and butter them up. Come on, God. This here competent woman is bad. You hear me? She's bad. She knows how to do this thing. Yes, I am confident now. I got up from off my knees and my Lord showed me the plan. I got up and when I got up, he gave me a glimpse of what was about to take place. Because you got to understand, in prayer, the Lord will give you direction. He will show you where you're going. He'll show you what to do. Yeah, see, you don't even understand, hey, man, I got something set up for you. Because I'm a confident woman that has already risen. I'm a confident woman that has already risen. See, I already got up from that fast. I'm a confident woman that has already risen. And what I've been called to do is deliver my people. Uh-huh. Can you come back to dinner tomorrow night? <laughs> so the next night, they have this dinner again. And the king then says to her, uh, baby, you know, we, we, we've been eating two days in a row. <laughs> we usually don't eat together. You be on your side, I be on my side, and this is what we do. What, what's, what's going on? There's got to be something that's going on. What's going on, baby? You know everything I got is yours. You know everything I own is yours. What is it? Well, you know, him. You know, he's, he's, you, you know, uh, Mordecai? Yeah. No, no, Mordecai, the one that saved your life. Uh -huh. right. <laughs> the one that told you that your homeboys was out the plot to kill you. Uh -huh. You remember that, Mordecai? Uh -huh. The one that, yeah, 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 the one, yeah, him. Remember him? Well, let me tell you what had happened was, what, what happened was, um, him, your right hand man, he has set up to kill Mordecai and all of my people. Yeah, you know you love me, right? You know everything you got belongs to me, right? You know, come on, a confident woman breaks rules. She takes 
the word from the king that was given to her and speak it back to him. Y'all should have caught that in the spirit. Because see, the king gave you the word. He gave you the word. And he told you whatever I got, every need will be supplied according to my riches and glory. He said, by his stripes you are already healed. He said, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and who are the call according to his purpose. He said, you are more than conquerors. He said, all things, all things work together. Somebody needed to hear that again. He said, there is nothing too hard for me. He said, try me, taste me, and share my good. He also said, and the abundant above all you can ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. Your father gave you a word. And all you got to do is give it back to him. Because his word never comes back void. Never. That's a confident woman. Yes. That gives the king back what he told her. Well, you know, you 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 said you love me, you're gonna take care of me, you're gonna do well. I need you to save my people. Hold up. Mm Heaven, -hmm. is this true? Are you are you you you're planning to kill him? And and oh yeah, by the way, let me tell you how he's gonna kill me. Cause see, he already got that set up. So, you you gonna kill the man that saved my life? You you mm -hmm, and all my people keep on rubbing it in, Esther. Keep on rubbing it in. All my people. Oh, okay. Well, um, I guess what we gonna do is. The same way you gonna kill him All right. mm -hmm. is the way that I'm gonna kill you and all your family, all your people are gonna die the same way you plan to kill Mordecai. See, when you break rules, the attack that was sent by the attacker. God. Is then reversed and sent back to the attacker. Yeah. All right. Can somebody in here yell and say boomerang? Boomerang! boomerang. All right. boomerang. Absolutely. Because see, what happens is when you mess with someone who is walking in the confidence oh. of God and you try to send an attack, let me tell you that God gives the power to the one that you sent the attack to to use the power in their mouth to say return back to Now let me package that up and put it back in the mail and send it back to you. The same way you plot to kill me, Morde Mordecai and me and my people, guess what, Haman? Now you done got that back. You can't mess with a confident woman. You can't mess with a confident woman, a woman who knows who she is in God, knows where she stands, knows what she got. You can't mess with a confident woman. I'm woman of them ones where I stand up in the witch face and tell her, I see you, I know what you trying to do, and I'm here to let you know that it won't work. Take your channeling, oh my bash, take your channeling, your non-powerful butt back home. It do not work in here. I'm one of them ones that will be the sheep to walk up amongst wolves and let the wolves know I am not weak, I'm just me. 
wonder what you need here tonight to say that same hurt that I've been dealing with for years. I'm not going back home with it. I'm healed because you can't be hot. You can't be confident and be broken. You can't be confident and be bound. You've got to say tonight, I'm leaving the brokenness. Tonight, I'm not being bound, every chain broken up of me. I came tonight to break some rules. Cause I'm leaving out of here confident. Tonight, I'm not, I'm not leaving here operating in the same, operating in the same spirits I've been operating in doing the same stuff, talking about people the same way, operating the same way. I'm not gonna be no lie, no cheat, no thief. I ain't operating in no jealous spirit, no envy spirit, no hate spirit, no competitive spirit. I want my sister to go to the next level and we gonna be confident together.
because the anointing that's on your life needs some anointing that sees, pushes, and go. The Bible says, write the vision and make it plain so that those that read it will run and go with it and not run and pray against it. Sometimes, first and foremost, the Bible says that we have to be mindful of the company that we keep. Because corrupt company will mess up our character. And you can be associated with people that are really bad people that will make your character look bad and make people not want to deal with you. Because of who you have around you. And so what the Lord is going to do is he's cleaning up around you and he's going to put people that's going to do this. Absolutely. They're going to hold you up. They're going to lift you up. Not people that's going to do this. Girl, we together. We on the same level. We this, we that, we this. Girl, let me tell you something. Girl, girl but first and foremost, I don't like when people call the women of God girls. I don't like that. Respect the anointing that's on the woman of God's life. Girl, no, pastor. Absolutely. Pastor. Not no homegirl, honey boo, baby, girl, no, pastor. Not first name, she ain't no chill chill. No, she can't be eating out with y'all because y'all ain't going to be trying to get on her level and trying to be cool and then be disrespectful on the sneak tip. No, she's pastor. Because what's happening is too many people are becoming too common with you. And for where the Lord want to take you, he don't need no common people. He need people that's going to respect the anointing, respect, respect who you are, and also know that what they are in your life and not try to have your life. Okay. People can't get mad because you don't deal with everybody and you just have certain people. It's not called a click, it's called I can trust them because they got my back for real. It's funny that I'm telling you this. I heard the Lord say, I'm talking to you now. I'm talking to you too, girl. I'm talking to you too, girl. I hear you, Lord. See, I know how to take when the Lord is speaking to me. I ain't ashamed to get my rebukes and chastisement. But we are in a season now where the Lord has literally spoken to us at the house new beginnings and the Lord says that whatever you put your hands to now I will prosper it. We are in a season where the Lord is saying plant, 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 plant your seeds now. Put your work in now. Plant your seed of faith now. Make the moves. Move, 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 move because we are under an open heaven and what God is doing in this time is letting the people go ahead and do because now he's ready to do. If you do not take the opportunity of the open heaven and it closes, it's on you. So I am telling you, woman of God, you are under an open heaven. And the Lord says, step out, whatever you want, however you want it, go for it. It's the power, I will do the exceedingly. I am able to do the exceedingly, the abundantly above all you can ever ask or think, but it's the power that we're giving you. Work your power. Work your power. Work your power. 
We all have flaws. We all have things that we have to work on and get done. The Lord says, stay in his presence. Stay in his presence. Because the rise of a competent woman is really you. It's really you. And so if you stop rising, then this don't rise. And there's a lot of women that need to rise up into being the competent woman. So if you keep quiet, because you were chosen for a time such as this, break the rules. Break the rules. Break them. Because your daddy said, everything that I have, Everything that I own, it belongs to you. It belongs to you. Come on, confident women, give God some praise in this house. Come on, confident women, give God some praise in this house. Come on, confident women, give God some praise in this house. Come on, confident women, give God some praise in this house. Come on, confident women, give God some praise in this house.
into your identity. Walk into your identity. Walk into your identity. Walk in it. No weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. No weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. And every word spoken against you will be condemned. Walk in your identity. There's words, not a word, but there's words in your belly. I don't know if you're gonna be here all weekend, but I hear the Lord say that this weekend you're going to birth You're going to birth a new level. You're going to birth a new level. You're going to birth a new level. Another level to your anointing. Even understand what you went through. Don't even understand what you went through. They think this oil. They think this oil. It's just a joke. But you suffered for this one. You suffered for this one. You suffer for this power. And these are the words that I hear the Lord say. Harvest time is now. Is she one of the speakers or something? Yeah. Yeah. Because see what I hear the Lord saying is, through the word you release, is when you're going to birth the next level. There's something about this word that, that you're going to release. The new identity. The new level. The level of confidence that's getting ready to come out of you this weekend. You're going to be a force to be reckoned with when you get back home. Listen, I want every woman in here to remember these words. To remain and to be confident. You've got to stay on your knees. You've got to stay on your knees. Because when you stay on your knees and in the presence of God, is when you no longer are there, but God is. Is when He now becomes alive and you then die. Be that confident woman that somebody else. God bless you. I want to get some of the money to this one.